What is up, everybody? This is Michael Filesage checking in here today. And today I want to talk about FAE, aka Fresh Air Exchange. This is supposed to be wind if you guys don't know. And also the first title is why are they fuzzy? So first of all, there's a connection, right? Between fuzzy feet and FAE. Fuzzy feet is basically is this like white layer of mycelium, this fuzz blanketing, usually the bottom of your stems. You don't want it to be like this, although it can certainly happen and I will cover that. And basically what that is, is the mycelium because it's all mycelium. You know, it's just all differentiated mycelium, that's it. Whether it's the substrate or if it's the fungus itself, it's all just mycelium, just in different forms. So basically when they fuzz up like this, what they're doing is they're trying to get oxygen. They want fresh air. That's why they're all coming out. They're becoming fuzzy because that, that way they can get more surface area to catch oxygen. Now, the reason that I say that most of the time fuzzy feet is due to FAE, there's also a genetic component to it. Some genetics will always fuzz up no matter what. For example, like even outdoor grows will sometimes have fuzzy feet and they have all the FAE they could ever ask for, right? So there is a genetic component to it, but for the most part, they are a good indicator of not enough fresh air exchange. So in this video, I want to talk about, is it a problem and when is it a problem? So if it's just like fuzzing up on the bottom, but the shape of the mushroom is, is just like a regular mushroom, Mushroom, you know, it's not completely mutated and weird. That's fine. That's normal. Especially after you dunk your substrate. Let's say, for example, after a flush, you dunk your substrate and then you wait for the second flush. The second flush comes in and those fruits have like fuzz on the bottom. That's completely normal because it's due to moisture as well. So there's just too much humidity, especially near the base of the stem because it's closer to the substrate itself, which you just let absorb a bunch of water, right? So now that water is evaporating and it's creating a little microclimate close to the bottom. But the top is is fine that's fine right the shape of the mushroom is fine that's fine now Another very common reason for having fuzzy feet is when you have a full flush. A good pin set, what that does is it traps a lot of the humidity down on the substrate surface, which is good for the fungi, but it will cause a little fuzzy feet, but generally that's no problem. This is when it becomes a problem, okay? So this was just moisture, that's generally okay. The problem comes when it's due to just carbon dioxide, too much carbon dioxide buildup, there's not enough oxygen coming in. So what happens is this happens, right? You get small caps, and you just get this long, elongated, weird looking mushroom with, with fuzz all over the place. Now, technically this is, this is, you see, I only use the word bad in terms of it's bad for like the organism itself. It's not thriving. It's not happy or as happy as it could be. But as cultivators, right, we, we are propagating for certain other reasons rather than just propagation as they do in the wild, because that's what they want to do, right? For example, we purposely create sporeless versions of varieties. We create sporeless versions of this, sporeless versions of that. We create, you know, like mutants, weird mutants that will never survive in the wild. So our purposes are different than just pure propagation as they are in nature. So, you know, this might be, you know, something that you want to go for, for whatever reason. For example, it's pretty easy to get good yield if you just let them grow like huge and weird like this, but I wouldn't recommend it. You know, it's just better not to cheat. I don't, I don't even know if you could even call it cheating, but yeah, they're just not happy like this. So ultimately it's up to you. Now, on the other hand, is, is the white stuff edible, for example? Absolutely. It's just mycelium at the end of the day. Now, there is an interesting study that came out somewhat recently that looked at some of the compound makeup of mycelium compared to the fruiting bodies. And the mycelium has way more, like 20 times more of certain compounds that the fruiting body itself doesn't have. So the idea is that the mycelium could actually influence the taste experience, the, the you know, the cooking gourmet experience of tasting these guys because the mycelium has a special flavor all of its own. So, you know, this is a new area that, you know, people will start looking into. So yeah, that's basically pretty much what I can tell you. I'll leave it up to you what you decide to do. But generally as a recap, just a little bit on the bottom, all good all over the top, not very happy. And all like long and weird, small caps, no good. All right guys, Michael File Sage, checking out.